I think uh, somehow the players figured out a way uh, how to deal with uh, the trauma that came with uh, and the aftermath that came with that bus accident. I mean, there was family members of some of the teammates, um, but you know, they were all close, your close friends. And I think all the guys, uh, we were forced to grow up a little bit uh, quicker than most 18 year olds, 19 year olds because of the bus accident and having to deal with situations that most people don't have to deal with at that time. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm proud to say that I played for the South Front Broncos. For me, it was about family, right? And, and again, my, there's no question I had a team uh, that supported me and, and my family through it. And, and the community gave us uh, and embraced us and supported us and stuff like that. But I think, you know, for me, it was about, it was about moving on with my family. And, and uh, again, when you lose a brother, uh, then I felt I needed to be there for my mother because my mother was just in distraught. And, and same with my dad, right? So. Uh, to me, that was that was the first and foremost thing for me is to make sure my mom was going to be okay. Um, of course, me and Darren, um, you know, it, it, it was a tragic accident, and and again, at some point, it, it takes people longer to move on, um, and so. Uh, but you know, I, I, my, I don't think my mom ever got over it. Everybody's away from home, and and uh, you know whether they were healthy uh, ways to cope or not. Uh, somehow, the team felt. Uh, and figure out a way to cope uh, with it. And, uh, and I think it was a little bit of a rallying point for us, like uh, the guys that uh, were on the bus and, and uh, uh, you know, that actually went on to play in the Memorial Cup in 89. It was, you know, if there was one thing that we could do it for, it would be for those guys. In the scheme of things, um, you do two things. You, you, you fold things in or, you know, you build resiliency and you, and you move on. And I think as a team, we felt that we're going to move on. Uh, and, I, and again, whether or not we, uh, you know, did it make our S stronger? Maybe. And maybe it was something that it was a goal, and it, there was a plan in place, and and we needed to continue with that plan. And it was an unfortunate accident, but uh, you know, with the support and, and the embrace of the community, we were able to move past it. You definitely, you know, look at life differently. At 18 years old or 17, you you think yourself pretty invincible. Uh, and to see something like that happen, it, it really makes you focus on what you want to do. Look forward in life and, and say, you know what, I, if I want to accomplish something, you know, now's the opportunity, I can't just postpone it. The death of my brother kind of brought me to the point where saying, you know, I want to do this for him. So, um, you know, we always believed in each other as players. It was exciting to, to get back playing again, you know, after the Bucks accident. It was, it was a time where the players really didn't know how to grieve or deal with it. There wasn't a lot of us still left around in 89, uh, but there was five or six guys that uh, you know had that to play for, had that in the back of our minds. And I think the other players respected that. They, they knew what it meant. Uh, and you know that was something that I think really rallied our team together. I think everyone expected us to have a strong team. Uh, when Joe Sackick wasn't returned as a 19-year-old, I thought maybe we won't be as good as everybody thought. Uh, but yeah, we went out, we won our first 12 games, uh, really never even got pressured in those first 12 games. And from then your team just grows so much confidence. The city gets behind you. Uh, you know, we always had pretty good fan support from the start, uh, but yeah, our building was full every night, beyond capacity most nights. Beginning that year, we knew we, when we had some young talent, um, Jeff Sanders and Kimmy Daniels, Blake Knox, um, we had really young talent that was really good, and, and when you got rookies that can that can score like they could, and and, and you knew we had a chance from the get go. So, uh, and I think uh, I mean, and we just you know the focus was our is our home base, and and again we were I, I don't know how many losses we had at home. I don't think it was very many that year, uh, but um, we got on a roll and we never stopped. We made a few more trades. Trevor Sim was was actually a pretty good trade for us. Uh, and again, the, the top management team put a put a, a game plan and a team on the ice, and uh, you know, and we just executed. I just remember us playing and just started winning, and and it didn't. You want to say it felt natural? It just you're just playing, and all of a sudden you're winning, and it it felt like you couldn't lose. I don't know. It was just we just had a good time playing with each other, like playing the game the way we wanted to play it, we were all in the same mindset, and the coaches allowed us to play that way. I don't really think we had any superstars that ever, you know, that, that uh, went on into the NHL to be a superstar. Um, you know, we had, uh, we had a lot of guys that, 
uh, did their job, right? And I mean, you know, Tim Tisdale's, the Kruger brothers, uh, Bob Wilkie, Soberlock, uh, you know, Danny Lambert, Kazowski. I mean, there's a lot of guys. I think we had, you know, six or seven guys over 100 points that year. And and it was just, I think we were a little bit like the bad news bears in break, breaking training. I mean, you know, if you looked at our team on paper, if you looked at our team getting off the bus, you'd think, how are these guys ever going to win? And, uh, and and we just played. When you looked up and down the lineup and kind of what we had and, um, you know, the amount of skill that we were able to possess, and not only from our 20-year-olds and 19-year-olds, but even our 16-year-olds were, were some of the best in the league at that time, and the way they were able to contribute was was awesome, and, and, and we kind of knew there was a good thing happening here. We had four lines deep that could, you know, we thought at any time any line could score, you know, and, and with, um, you know, the likes of, of me and Danny and Bob Wilkie and, and Kevin Knopp on the back end and, you know, three of us, D, you know, collecting almost 300 points that year, maybe a little bit more from the back end was unheard of at that time. And so it was easy. It was just we were able to move the puck side to side and, and uh, it just seemed like a game where it was... It wasn't just shoot and crush and that. We used our skill, we used our vision, we used our, you know, everybody jumping up. It was a five-man attack, a four-man attack. And uh, at that time, it was hard to deal with when you had skilled players, and we did. We had we had skill from top to bottom, and it was hard to deal with. Teams didn't want to take penalties against us because we, that year too, we had the most power play goals in, ever in the Western League, like the, the record. So you knew if you're going to take a penalty, you're probably going to get a goal score against you. We had more than just five guys going to power play. We probably had two units that can score, so yeah, you didn't want to take a penalty against us. And I think teams started realizing that as the year went on. Yeah, I remember we scored 10 power plays against Moose Jaw one game, and you know, Trev had to hide in his neck because they were throwing rocks at him. And it was, uh, uh, it just tells you what kind of depth we had as far as skill and, and who was able to score and, and move the puck pretty good. I think it just goes to the depth of our hockey club. Uh, when you've got you know, as many 50 goal scores as we had, uh, there was always enough offensive threat that we could we could pretty much play with anybody. Uh, we could cover up mistakes that we made. Uh, we had three of the best defensemen probably in Canada at that point uh, that probably never got enough credit ever. Uh, and our goaltender was, was way beyond years. Krugs was the living room goalie. He had his own style, but I mean, I think he had 30 assists that year or something like that. It was incredible. Uh, but I mean, he, he could play the puck. And I mean, that was our... You know, I mean, he was our breakout. We had, uh, and it was kind of before guys started playing the puck. I mean, I remember Hexall playing the puck fairly well, but, uh, you know, Krugs, Krugs was really good at it. Now it's common practice, uh, but he took a lot of pressure off our defensemen uh, being able to play the puck that he could. If you talk to my defense, um, I don't know how many games they missed the injury, but I don't think it was very many because the reality is like, I, you know, I'd recognize if it's in the corner, I can get to it. I would just move it and, 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 and we're to a path where they could just skate and go with it, right? So it was good that way. And teams had a hard time checking against us because they couldn't dump it in. I, I really spent a lot of time out of my net. Knowing what everybody was capable of doing and we knew that they were gonna do it. It's hard to find that many good hockey players. We had good times, but we were always together. We never left anybody behind. And for us, that brought us closer together and that brought us, um, you know, we, we did it ourselves. We just had so much offensive ability, uh, the whole team, three lines that could score. We've been in back then, there just wasn't that depth that any other team had. We went 12-0 and in the playoffs, and I think that's a little bit unheard of, but, uh, you know, we, I mean, if you talk to a lot of the guys, I mean, they'll tell you we probably played our worst hockey in the Memorial Cup. We had to scramble and, and uh, you know, find a way to, to pull some of those games off in the Memorial Cup, but we definitely weren't clicking on all cylinders uh, in that tournament. You know, as a group, very excited to get there. Um, obviously, a little nervous from my part. You never know what to expect when you get to the Final Four. And I don't think we played our best hockey. I, I think we, we played in spurts where it was good and where it was bad, but... Uh, you know, you get to that stage and everybody's good. I think the difference was just, uh, you know, you're playing, you know, every second night, you know, every night at some points, and all of a sudden you've you got a structured schedule where you got days off, you're playing in the afternoon sometimes. Uh, so your, your game days were all set up differently. Uh, and you did have a lot more focus on you. You, know, you don't get a lot of media coverage in Swift Current. I think we did have a TV station at that time, but uh, you know, it's uh, not many people watching. So uh, it was a change for everybody to, to have to deal with the media uh, at that level. We weren't used to it. Uh, and just, just the overall 
attention that we were getting. I, I don't think we, we played a very good game the whole tournament. Uh, I know we didn't. Uh, we didn't play our best hockey by any means, uh, but we just weren't used to those outside distractions. We didn't expect to lose a game throughout the year. And when you got teams, you know, and in Saskatoon, we, um, you know, beat four straight in the playoffs and, you know, come to the, the round robin there and they were able to beat us. And then they had a real good hockey team. They had a real deep hockey team and, and, and their goaltender, Greenlay, played absolutely phenomenal in the tournament where, you know, he was just okay during the year in the playoffs. We were able to get to him a little bit, but he, um, you know, for him, it was all about timing and net there. But so, I mean, just a lack of uh, maybe some execution a little bit, but as well as, you know, there's some good teams there, and, and we weren't able to do maybe what we were able to do throughout the years. Yeah, it was our first loss of the playoffs, so yeah, I think it got our attention. I think it made us focus a little bit more on on how close we were to reaching our goal. Uh, I don't think we ever really realized where we were until afterwards, uh, but I think that one loss, yeah, okay, now we can't afford another loss. It's uh, lose and you go home. So I think you know we definitely played better those last two games. Uh, and give Saskatoon credit, they made some adjustments uh, to prepare for us. We you know, handled them pretty easy uh, in the playoffs, but uh, they were prepared and uh, they had a good hockey club and they, they gave us all we could handle. We ended up playing Peterborough in the semifinals there. The scoring came through, our young guns really played well. Uh, so, you know, for the most part, I think we kept our composure. We knew what we had to do and, and, and our game plan was, was to come out and, and, and basically, give, if we had a chance to bury him, to certainly do that. And, you know, and we scored six goals and I think that was, uh, it was a good feeling. And you're looking up and you're seeing 15,000 people and you're like, oh, really nice. But in World Cup, I don't think I remember looking in the stands or <laughs> you're playing and uh, you're not consciously saying, well, this is on TV and people are actually watching this. So like that's for me, I don't think I remember feeling the pressure for me personally, but I don't remember anybody's being nervous. We just, and if you watch the game, we continue to play the way we wanted to play when we went through overtime. So if that nervous was there, you didn't see it. I don't think we ever got worried. I mean, we were confident we could beat anybody. It was just about how we were going to get it done. And, uh, you know, I guess for dramatics, we may as well do it in overtime. I mean, we had a real character team. and There was a lot of guys that uh, had been through adversity, right? Had been in pressure situations, knew how to handle stress. And, uh, you know, a, a hockey game ain't going to rattle you after you've had four of your buddies die. And, uh, and I think that's basically... Like how we went through this is, you know, we never got rattled. Like, you know, it wasn't a panic situation. Like we're going into overtime. It's like, all right, right on Krug's great save because he made a wicked save to keep us in there. And uh, um, so, yeah, we just went out and, and, and played. But I think nobody panicked. And, you know, it was, again, it was a, just a hockey game. At the end of the day, it was just a hockey game. And, uh, and that's the kind of the way we looked at it and our job and the way we, our motto was, you know, we have a better time when we win. <laughs> so let's win. Yeah, it was a pass that I shouldn't have made. I tried to go across ice, but uh, we did a lot of that. It just, they happened to read it, whether they had a scouting report that this could happen. Uh, but give them credit, they, uh, they picked off a pass, went in and scored. Uh, so I had that to deal with the rest of the game. Okay, Tizzy, you know, you, you made a bloop and you know, it's time for you to get it back. And then he admitted that, you know, okay, guys, I, it's on me. I'll make sure we get this one back. You know, I told the guys uh, when we were sitting before overtime that you know, I, I made the mistake, but I'll make up for it. I just remember Trev making an unbelievable save with about a minute left to go in the game, uh, point blank, and he just kind of hit him and he kind of fell over and was able to grab it. I remember in the overtime, going into overtime, we in the dressing room, I remember the dressing room being quiet but the right people stood up and said, we're not gonna lose. If there was pressure and everybody and people were nervous, it wasn't shown. And it was just like, no, just go play and see what happens kind of thing, play our style. And either win the way you wanna play and lose the way you wanna play, and that's the way we played. So. Like roll the dice, like who was gonna come down and score and who had the best chances. And, and, and I know they had a, when they, they had a chance to win it there with about a minute and 20 seconds left, Yellow Egg, it was in front of my net and I, and I had made a save where I caught it under my arm and uh, it, it was wide open and pretty intense, right? So again, I, you know, I think that save picked us up a little bit and, you know, the urgency creeped up a little bit. Bob Wilkie gets it. You know, you, you wouldn't see it now, but I think he, you know, tried to beat two guys and faked a couple shots and uh, he drew a lot of guys to him and moved it back to his defensive partner, Darren Kruger. 
uh, who you know was one of the smartest uh, guys ever to play this game that I think. Uh, and I just knew I had to get to the front of the net. So uh, I, that's where I scored a lot of my goals. That's where I sort of made home. You know, I thought he was going to take it to that score right there. So we ended up losing the puck at the last minute. And um, he turned around, he gave it back to me. I was in long guy at the point. I think we had everybody else down by the net. And so he just brought it back to me. And I went out and I faked the shot and, and wanted him to commit to it, which he did. And then I just kind of, you know, I was looking at Brian Sack right beside the net, kind of behind the net, and I just threw at the net and Tim got a stick on it. I just knew if I went to the front of the net, Darren was going to try and find me, and yeah, he, he, sh he went back door. It was definitely going to go wide, but his attention all along, knowing that someone would be there deflect. If, if I didn't deflect it, I think Brian Sackick was right behind me. He probably scores the goal if I don't get a stick on it. And it was jubilation from there. It was unbelievable. We went through how much to get there. And again, I don't think we were thinking who deserves what, but you just don't want to lose. It's a relief that it's over kind of thing, but it's kind of, everybody uses the word surreal, but it is, you're kind of in a moment in a fog. It's just amazing how you celebrate it year after year. Like years later, we go to Swift Current and we still talk about it. We won, we, we persevered. Uh, we went from the ultimate low to the ultimate high, and we won to celebrate it. I mean, obviously a special moment anytime you can play with your brother, and it was a special moment for our family for sure. I think everybody felt proud because I think if you look at the town, you look at the team, you look at everything that people had gone through, right? From the new team coming, the excitement to the bus crash, right? Uh, to winning Memorial Cup. I mean, that is an emotional journey like nothing else. There had to be something going on with, um, you know, whether it was talked about every day or not, uh, there was something going on that uh, made us, you know, play hard and play for those guys that lost their lives, for sure, there's no question about it. I felt that, you know, we accomplished what we set out to do and that's uh, to win, win the Memorial Cup. And, and uh, for, for the four guys that lost their lives, uh, more than anything, that was the sense of accomplishment. I think when we got that cup and basically it's like, this is for, for, for you. And, you know, I think I got more, uh, more of a thrill out of handing the cup off to the rest of the guys and um, letting them celebrate with it and be with them when they did celebrate it.